People nowadays are talking about diversity, equity, and inclusivity, and it's, you know, it's the buzzwords now. But for me, growing up, it was a reality. You know, I grew up in a township um, because everyone was separated. So Indian people, I'm of Indian descent. Indian people were in one township, you know, African people were in one, and we were all separated because, you know, you divide and conquer. That was the way of the apartheid government. You keep people separated. And so it was really quite a tough existence to be heard, to be seen, and to have people around me heard and seen. I was put in a... My parents were, were so... I mean, bless them. They managed to put me in a private school. And at that time, private schools only took a very small group of non-white children. So I was put in the school of majority white children, and I was only one of 20 non-white children in the school. So there I had to really work very hard to be seen, be heard, be accepted. Hey everybody, Mark Ahrensberg here with The Pure Now Show. This is episode number 10. My guest today is Jasmine Osvat. Jasmine was born and raised in South Africa, and her professional life spans from being a producer of compelling stories with Al Jazeera to producing incredible projects with people the likes of Oprah Winfrey. Very excited to talk about her incredible passion for her work. Here we go. What I'd like to do is go back to the fact that you're from South Africa, and uh, I'm interested in your upbringing, your family life, what informed you through your experiences in South Africa to bring you to this point where you have become this passionate storyteller and that you really seem to put your heart and soul into what you produce. and. Uh, what can you tell us about growing up in yeah. South Africa? I was born in the 70s in South Africa, which was pretty much the height of apartheid. My family were very involved in uh, politics, as most people of color in that stage were. So our lives were heavily entwined in politics, heavily entwined in social justice and human rights issues growing up. Many of our family members were in exile, uh, a lot of them put in jail. So my youth was spent very focused on these issues. And I think that definitely played a huge part in who I am now and where I stand on a lot of issues. People nowadays are talking about diversity, equity, and inclusivity, and it's, you know, it's the buzzwords now. But for me, growing up, it was a reality. You know, I grew up in a township um, because everyone was separated. So Indian people, I'm of Indian descent. Indian people were in one township, you know, African people were in one, and we were all separated because, you know, you divide and conquer. That was the way of the apartheid government. You keep people separated. And so it was really quite a tough existence to be heard, to be seen, and to have people around me heard and seen. I was put in a... My parents were, were so... I mean, bless them. They managed to put me in a private school. And at that time, private schools only took a very small group of non-white children. So I was put in the school of majority white children, and I was only one of 20 non-white children in the school. So there I had to really work very hard to be seen, be heard, be accepted, you know, um, and it, it really propelled me into this understanding of how we bring people together and how we allow people's voices to be heard, because it was such a tough time for me. And then, you know, times change and you grow up and you, you, you gain understanding of how to work the system, how to work people around you, how to manage the spaces you're in. And my biggest lesson in life was having mentors, people, men, white males. And for instance, I had a, an amazing mentor. His name was Mike Yeltseth, who was a, a white male who came from a very... Um, a very white family in South Africa, but he really took the time to get to know me, you know? He really took the time to get to know me, to get to understand what I wanted, and gave me a chance. He gave me opportunities that I don't think I ever would have had growing up in South Africa, being not only a person of color, but being a female uh, in, in the television and production industries. So that was a really big chunk of, of, of growth for me, working with Mike and having his mentorship and his guidance. And again, it was this idea of, you know, he saw me, he heard me, he asked me the questions that needed to be asked to see me grow. And those lessons I've kind of taken with me throughout my journey. 
and it's always become everyone I sit with and meet with, everyone I work with, every story I want to tell is ensuring that that person is is heard and seen, and that their growth to their next step, be it whatever, you know, be it um, if it's a production and you're working with a producer, if it's a director, if it's the talent, everyone there needs to be heard and seen and recognized for who they are, because all of that really comes into making something amazing. Um, so, you know, those lessons kind of pulled me through to where I am now. Yeah, I mean, South Africa is, you know, it's, a, it's just, you know, it's my heart. I get very emotional when I talk about home, being far from home now, uh, with all the chaos and happening. And uh, my voice starts shaking, but it's, it's, uh, it's home and, and there's a lot happening there. And I, and I wish I was back home, you know, to, to be a part of the, the changes that need to happen. But there's other reasons that I'm here, uh, and my reasons are to work hard in order to help people back home with what I with what I learn and what I do here. So, yeah, that's a little bit about where I come from. So, speaking of your family and your daughter, how have you managed to balance that professional life <laughs> and your personal life, even though, of course, we're just compartmentalizing. It's all just life. Yeah. But how have you well, managed to raise a daughter and and give her what she needs and make sure you have what you need and be able to go out and do what you do and feel good about it all at the end of the day. Wow, Mark, it's so funny. I've got, we've, I've got three kids and a granddaughter. I'm 45 and I, I was a young mom, so but it all started out really early. So Leah, my daughter, is the eldest, she's 27. I've got a son, Mikhail, uh, he's 24 and he's a paddy dive instructor, so he travels the world diving. And then we've got a very late baby who's Malia and she's four years old. So I've got a, a little toddler running around too and our granddaughter is five. So we're a big family of craziness. We always laugh. We say we like Jerry Springer. My daughter and I both were pregnant within a year of each other. Um, so it was wow. very funny. But um, how beautiful as well because we've got to experience this amazing, this amazing bringing new life into our family and watching each other raise our children, you know, um, which is unbelievable and very special uh, for us. But yeah, I think in terms of balancing, there is no balance. It's a very hard space. Balancing family and work and the pressure of working. Uh, you know, when I worked at Al Jazeera, I was on call 24 seven and it was very hard to manage raising a family. And th at that point I was a single mom um, raising a family without um, without support. So the only thing I can say is you need support. Everyone needs support. Women need support. You know, dads need support. If you're raising a family and having a job that is high pressure, you need to be supported by your community, by your family, by, by your colleagues, you know, by the people you work with. People need to have an understanding of your life and what is happening outside of that. I remember Leah being really small and me in edit suites and her playing on the floor while I was doing an edit, you know. And that again, I think with COVID has really brought that to light, you know. We can work with our children around us. We just need to find a balance of how we do that. And that balance is, is, is how we manage. You know, it's not even how you balance it, how you relate to children and how you relate to people. It's so funny because me managing my time with Malia, who's here at the moment, she just went out with her dad while I did this call. But it's about how you relay, right? So I know I've got a call now with you and it's, I know Malia's gonna be all in, this, all in this space, but it's about having the support of my husband to take her out for an hour. And when she comes back, it's about me having the support to go, great, I've got some online work to do. Malia, here's some blocks to play with. You've got 30 minutes to play with your blocks and your paints, you know? It's about managing how you, rel how you, how you deal with people. And it's, you know, how you deal with an adult is how you deal with your child. It's about explaining, it's about going, hey, you know, I've got to shoot this week and I'm not going to be home for four days, but granny's going to be with you for four days. So it's the support and the communication. So for me, it's all about, yeah, support, communication and, and, um, and just, yeah, just being nice, you know, <laughs> being nice and explaining to people what you need to do. Children understand it as well as an adult. So I think it's just about communicating and being honest and trying to find the best support you can with your colleagues, with your family. And um, yeah, and working it that way.